Hey everyone, it's week 13 of our series, Walk It Like You Talk It, and tonight we're talking about prayer. Do you know how many times it says in the Bible that having a perfect prayer life is key to your salvation? None. Yeah, that's not a requirement to be saved. I feel like we put a lot of pressure on our prayer life because of how powerful we know it is. But Jesus never tells us that not praying is a sin. Here's the thing though. I don't say this to tell you that that you don't need to pray. I say this to remove any guilt for being bad at praying often. Or maybe you're like me and feel like If you pray in front of any more than one person, your prayers need to sound super eloquent or you need a thesaurus to make it worthwhile, which you don't. Now, while I say that, I do also want to remind us that prayer is incredibly important and incredibly powerful. Let's think of it this way. Prayer is the way that you communicate with God. Jesus opened up this communication line with his life, and it's a direct access line to the Creator. I know you've heard this before, but let's just sit in that for a second. You have a direct line to the Creator of the world and the entire universe that created it. That's huge. But let's also think about how important our relationship with God is. We know and talk all the time about how important it is to have a personal and a strong relationship with Jesus is. Now, let's think for a minute about your relationships with other humans, other, other people. Jesus was human. Other people. We know and accept that to have a good relationship with people, you need to have good communication. I think it's pretty easy to see where I'm going here. To have a good relationship with God, we need to have good communication. And remember, I'm sure you have friends that you don't talk to a ton. Makes sense then that yes, it's possible to not pray every day and still have a relationship with God. But if you truly believe that God is your number one, that he's beyond your number one because he's the whole list of himself and everyone else is on a completely separate list, then why don't we communicate with him like we believe that? If we were to ask who your closest friends were, we'd probably also notice that it's the, the person or the people you talk to the most, whether that's in person or on the phone or whatever. Your closest friend isn't your pen pal from the third grade that you still get letters from every other year. Back in my day, it cost you money to send each and every text message. Like, legit, you only got so many text messages per month and if you went over that, it cost you per message. But they came up with this genius plan where you could pick your top five people that were your favorite. And those people, only to them, did you get unlimited texts or calls. If that were to be true for just life in general, who would be on your top five? Either who would you want there or who would end up there naturally? I know we wanna say that God would be in our top five, but if we took an inventory of all your communication, would that be true? Again, I don't mean mean to say this to bring guilt. Maybe your prayer life isn't your main or most natural form of communion with God or worship of Him. But if we want to prioritize our relationship, strengthen our relationship, wouldn't it make sense if we started with simply communicating? Let me leave you with this. Jeremiah 29, 12-13 says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Now in your small groups, talk about talking with God. How are you great at this? How can it be helpful? Why is it so important? 
But don't just talk, don't just think. Make sure that you can walk it like you talk it.